It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports, where we'll see a brawl inside the AFC North. It's the Cincinnati Bengals and the Baltimore Ravens, and it's coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to historic Baltimore, Maryland and m and Bank Stadium. Straight ahead, it's a rematch from last year's AFC wildcard game as it'll be the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the Baltimore Ravens. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. But Charles, this Ravens team been so successful in recent years, 10 or more wins in four of the last five seasons. What do they need to do to take that next step? Well, the way the Ravens have played for a lot of their franchise history, we know the defense is going to take care of business. They're going to keep you in every ball game. I think on offense, can they throw the ball more proficiently, especially out wide to the receivers, and make plays that way to continue to open up running lanes for a team that we know loves to move the ball along the ground. Meanwhile, for the visiting Bengals, it's a team that's been to the Super Bowl three times in their history, has never won it. But there's just a sense that this could be the year, and you don't disagree. I certainly do not, because go back two seasons ago, many thought it was a fluke that they got to the Super Bowl. Well, they came back the next year, and they got to the AFC Championship game, and were extremely disappointed they didn't get back to the Super Bowl. The pieces are in place. The confidence is high. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. The drive starts with a carry by Edwards. Yeah, he'll get it across the 35. It'll be second down. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. And he'll be stopped well short. Only two yards there, fourth and three. Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stopped them for almost no gain. Facing fourth down, Baltimore will punt Jordan Stout out there. Back deep for Cincinnati, the rookie Charlie Jones. Here come the Bengals now to take over. And they're brought out by the former Washington Husky, undrafted back in 2019, Jake Browning. Every time he leads his team out, there's no questioning. He's put the work in to earn his place in the NFL. There's no shortage of stories we've heard throughout his career about the effort he puts in to be in this spot. And that motivates everybody on his team. Now a three-time 1,000-yard rusher, Joe Mixon. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. Adafe Owe so quick, and he gets to him there behind the line. Pretty straightforward play there by the linebacker. He saw the run, went with straight-ahead pursuit, and dumped him behind the line of scrimmage. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. It's Mixon on the counter. And he's taken down. It's a gain of three from the 17 to the 20. Holding offense. That's on the guard, Alex Kappa. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Here's Browning. Short throw to Smith. 
So give him two yards there on the completion. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. They'll set up the screen here to mix it. And he'll be about a full yard shy of the 20 at the 19-yard line. They'll get eight, but they're going to have to punt here on the opening drive because that's not enough. And that doesn't have to gain big yardage to be an impactful play because if you can get those pass rushers second-guessing themselves that they might get hit with a screen, maybe you can wind up slowing them down just a step. And if you do that, that's a win for that play. So on fourth down, on is Brad Robbins to punt for the Bengals. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. That's taken on the 25. A nice return that time gets 12 yards back. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Baltimore is set to take over here for their second possession of the game. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Now let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands and maybe the offense will move a little bit. Sometimes better. it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That too. <laughs> so after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. No score after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Baltimore. It's the Ravens in possession as they've got it with a first and 10. Jackson options out left. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. They go play action with Jackson. Pass is tipped, but he's still able to bring it in. And all the way in for the Ravens. Touchdown. Zay Flowers, 45 yards. And the Ravens post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. I know these wide receivers are about flash and dash and high-flying plays, but a good number of them played running back at some point in their career and that's how they finish off a lot of their big plays run after the catch and this time he finishes off the big play in the end zone Justin Tucker for the extra point and the Ravens lead at 7-0 the drive summary that time five plays and it's capped off with a Ravens touchdown. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. They'll be looking to match that touchdown from a moment ago. 7-0 is the score as they begin with a first down. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of 7 past the 30 to the 32. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Back to Mixon on second down. And he is going to lose yardage here. 
It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks, and when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Well, a lot of times when you get a manageable third down situation like this, you have to think about your tight end, and he comes through for him picking up the first down. Mixon with a first down carry. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. From the 48-yard line, here's second and four. Now Browning. Now throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. I like his awareness in the pocket there. Nowhere to go with the football, so instead of forcing it to the sideline, he should go put this one into the harbor and live to fight another down without getting wet. To throw, Browning dumps it off to Nixon. And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. Always important as a defender on third down to keep the play in front of you and make sure you don't give up enough space that they can make a move on you in the open field. Try as he might, he wasn't able to get to the first down marker. Excellent defense, good tackling. And no return here. Where will they spot him? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Zay Flowers and his offense about to begin their next drive. He's doing what he's capable of, having a solid game. Not, not the most amazing game. He's not over 100 yards, but a good game so far. And you just know that mentally, he feels like he's one catch away from turning it into a great game and starting on that road. And the defenders are well aware of that, too. They've got to figure out a way to not let that escalate. Keep him right in his zone here and call it a day because otherwise he can really decimate him. You better believe they are well aware of his playmaking ability. Jackson now on second and ten. It fights him off. He's going to look deep down the field. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. Offense trying to get a little slick there and sneak the back out of the backfield and turn him into the primary deep receiver. But it was good coverage defensively. They were able to break it up. On third down, here's Edwards. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. Obviously an important run to avoid the three and out on your own side of the field. Shows a lot of faith in that offensive unit, doesn't it? That you want to run the ball in that situation. Pick up the first down. Also helps out your defensive guys a little bit, too. Allows them to get at least one more series of downs in order to get some rest. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now it's Jackson. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. They'll get 13 yards for the second play in a row. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. Jackson now. Incomplete. And we're down to eight seconds now. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. That's complete. It's Rashad Bateman. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 38-yard line. So we're at halftime here in the Inner Harbor with the hometown Ravens on top. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw a terrific first half from the dual threat quarterback, Lamar Jackson. 
His touchdown pass is the only score of the game thus far as his guys hold a 7-0 lead to this point. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. And no fireworks to start the half. This will be a touchback. For the Bengal offense ready to go to begin this third quarter. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively. Virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. That his first catch so far. They've held him under wraps, but he's got a first down there. Second and short, that's a rundown, so it's definitely a good time to go play action if you're feeling it. And they do so and pick up a first down. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Back to throw. Browner, nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Fortunate to get that football back because trailing here in the second half, last thing they needed was to lose the possession. And the word I think of here is opportunity because it could have been lost there, their chance to score points. But the opportunity for the defense was to go ahead and really close this game down if they were able to get possession. And Browning's throw caught by Higgins. Calling a gain of six on the play, and it brings up third and five now. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. From the gun on third down, Browning. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 30. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They look like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that there are very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. Looks like he's going to get a couple here on this first down carry, and that'll make it second and eight. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secure before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. So five yards here, five on the play. And now we've got a third and three. Looking to throw. Browning. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. To give you an idea of how accurate he's been throwing the football, we're in the second half. That's just his second incompletion. Well, if he's that locked in, that means everyone's locked in because to me it's like throwing a no-hitter in baseball. The pitcher may get the credit, a lot of people making plays behind him in the field. McPherson's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So they were facing the deficit coming out of the locker room at intermission, and at least they're able to get the field goal to cut into that deficit. Yeah, now your offense feels pretty good about itself, right? A little bit more up to speed coming out of the break. You turn to your defense now and say, hey, we got three there. We're chipping into the lead. Can you help us out? Hold them. Must get the ball back for us. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. This will probably be the last play of the quarter. They'll run with Edwards here to begin the drive. Fights through it. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. Three quarters have come and gone. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports.
Back now in Baltimore. It's the Ravens in control of the football. They've also got the lead as we get set for the fourth. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day. One score game. First and ten here. Breaks the tackle. He's got room to run. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Give him 10 yards on the keeper, and it'll lead to a second down. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people are worried about their... Oh, a heck of an effort there as he'll make the diving catch. A first down there and a pick up of 25. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. And just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it. They got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down. If they want to take another shot and try and loosen things up, that'd be the time to do it. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 as they're down to the 29 yard line. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. He'll lose a yard there and it's second and 11. So with your team leading in the fourth quarter, you know you've got to run the football. They know you've got to run the football. Sometimes that means there's nowhere to run the football. Touchdown, Zay Flowers, his second touchdown in the afternoon. And the Ravens are able to build on to their fourth quarter lead. And that makes this a two-score ball game. And you know, the way this thing has been going, Charles, two scores kind of feels like three or four scores. Yeah, that's a great observation. It's been a heck of a battle, hasn't it? And points have been at a premium throughout this game. So you have to wonder, is this going to be too much for them to overcome? Tucker now for the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. So that drive spanned five plays. And it's capped off by the Baltimore score. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. So now the Bengals down by 11. A little under two and a half to go. It's been a struggle to score all day, and now they need to do it twice here late to have a chance. On first down. Browning able to find Higgins and he's taken down but able to slip across the 35 throwing on first down Browning short throw to Smith and a nice pick up there as he'll get about nine and that will lead us to a stoppage here at the two minute warning so the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. Here's second and a yard. This is Mixon on the draw. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Back to throw. Browning. Open man downfield is Chase. He's got it. Cincinnati score. Jamar Chase, 48 yards. And the Bengals have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. you got a one-score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. So still a little work to do here, but they got the much-needed conversion. So they got that taken care of. Now you would assume onside kick in order to try and get the ball back again, in order to try and kick at least a tying field goal.
After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. And Baltimore's offense set for this next possession. And this game not quite over yet. And we'll likely see them take all three timeouts defensively, so they can't just kneel this one out. They're going to have to try to run a few plays. You're exactly right. They've got to get a first down and make them use up all their timeouts in order to feel like they have this one in hand. The run there on first down, going to get them five up to the 30. Now a timeout called for by the defense as he'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. Now they need two. Here's third down. They'll try and run for the first with Edwards. Now the Bengals going to signal for their third and final timeout. And Edwards trying to push forward, but unsuccessful. They stop him short of the marker. And here's a big one now. Trying to hold this lead. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They'll run for it. It's Edwards. And he has the Ravens first down, and it would appear that that's going to be the one to do it. That one, a backbreaker as they wind up converting there on fourth. I know we're there, wide open football, lot of spread formations, more space. But it's still a spot for power football. We just saw some of it right there. How about that run? Yeah, breaking the tackle. And, you know, late in this game, he wants a football in his hands. He's had a good day. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. They run once more with Edwards. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. Charles, why didn't they just take the knee there? You're asking the question that I'm asking as well because we've seen a lot of football where coaches decide maybe they get a little greedy. I don't know if they're doing it for stats or for what reason. We've seen it happen in college. And how about in the NFL? The miracle at the Meadowlands. All they had to do was take a knee and the game was over. The Giants ran it one more time. Ball popped free. Philadelphia picks it up and wins the game. What year was that? 1978. I think it was in November. On second down, it's Edwards. And he'll be tackled right on the midfield logo. Well, you really can't ask for much more than what we just had here. Not only a close game that went down to the wire, Charles, but a clean one, too. No turnovers in this contest. And I think you're exactly right about that. To me, this is just a pair of offenses trying to find the slightest bit of separation from each other. And they were both hoping that the other side would make the big mistake first. But today, neither side made that mistake. And what we got, a very entertaining game throughout. So that's a wrap for Charles.